Good morning and happy Mother's Day to all the moms and the other women that have helped raise kids in any way in their lives. So happy to have a great day today. And um, I have a special announcement. Our own Dave Jordan was just elected to the Ohio District Luther Church, Missouri Synod Board of Directors. So Dave is uh, new on that board, just elected this past week in their session. And uh, the organist today is not Diane. It is Judy, and uh, the other day when I was doing the newsletter, it was just, there she was, and her name went in. So sorry, Judy, but Judy's up on the organ bench. And we do have internet service. They came and changed the router this week, so we should have no problems with the live stream today. And we are very happy to have Pastor Ryan back here, and Pastor Ryan is back playing his trumpet, so he is up in the balcony right now, and he will come down after the first hymn. So we are happy to be here together today to praise and glorify our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ.
riseth from the dead. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day which the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in For the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Better is one day in your course than a thousand elsewhere. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than in the tents of the wicked. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Sanctify us in your truth. Your word is true. From the rising of the sun to its setting. In the name of the Lord is to be praised. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now. judge of the living and the dead. 
To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. While Peter was saying these things, the Holy Spirit fell, fell on all who heard the word, and the believers from among the circumcised who had come from with Peter were amazed, because the Holy Spirit was poured out even on the Gentiles, for they were hearing them speaking in tongues and extolling God. Then Peter declared, Can anyone withhold water for baptizing these people who receive the Holy Spirit, just as we have. Then he, and he commanded them to be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Then he asked him to remain for some days. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be A reading from 1 John. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of Him. By this we know that we love the children of God, when we love God and obey His commandments. For this is the love of God, that we keep His commandments, and His commandments are not burdensome. For everyone who has been born of God overcomes the world. And this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world except the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God? This is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ. Not by the water only, but by the water and the blood. And the Spirit is the one who testifies because the Spirit is the truth. For there are three that testify, the Spirit, and the water, and the blood, and these three agree. This is the word of the Lord. We rise for the Gospel lesson of our Lord. The reading of the Holy Gospel from John 15, verses 9 through 17. As the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things I have spoken to you, that my joy may be in you, and that your joy may be full. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no one than this, that someone lay down his life for his friends. You are my friends if you do what I have commanded you. No longer do I call you servants, for the servant does not know what his master is doing. But I have called you friends, for all that I have heard from my father I have made known to you. You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit, and that your fruit should abide, so that whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it to you. These things I command you, so that you will love one another. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Forever, O Lord, your word is firmly set in the heavens. You shall not hurt your neighbor's house. You shall not 
You shall let others take his wife, or his manservant, or his manservant, his ox or donkey, or anything that belongs to the kingdom. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, the only Son of our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered and died in the body, was accused of dying and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again after the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From this he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, with the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of the last. Grace, mercy, and peace be to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. This morning's text is taken from the Gospel lesson from John 15, which was just read. Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but when it comes to the school playground, that's the last place that you want to be if you're the smallest, weakest, or the slowest person around. Trust me, that's coming from personal experience. Captains do not think about another kid's feelings when they start picking their teams. They want the fastest, strongest, most skilled players on their team. Because everything on that playground runs and rules on victory. The weak only get to play because all the positions need to be filled. So as far as the athletic kids go, and they're concerned about this, the best player and person usually becomes the captains of the teams. And they believe that this is a necessary evil when it comes time to start choosing their teammates. Thank God that his church does not operate like a school playground. Jesus does not pick you, he does not pick me because we're wiser, stronger, richer, or even smarter than the rest of mankind. Matter of fact, the opposite is uh, true. Again, I'm living proof of that as well as yourselves. Jesus chooses us because he loves us. And that love has its beginning in Jesus himself who is always loved by God our Heavenly Father. Therefore, we whom Jesus loved will be able to start loving other people around us. Now, from eternity already, Jesus has been loved by God, our Heavenly Father. This is the foundation of all things. Before there were any created beings to love, God the Father was loving His Son. This is why John, in last week's epistle lesson, can say that God is love. This was the basis even for creation. That God who is love can have more precious ones like you and me to love. And this relationship with the Father loving His Son continues throughout Jesus' mission even here on earth. Watch carefully again at both Jesus' baptism and also His transfiguration. We're told in both places that God the Father called Jesus His beloved Son. And we see so oftentimes in scriptures, especially in the Gospel of Luke, where Jesus leaves his apostles and he goes to spend quality alone time with his Heavenly Father. And he does it as he loved child. There's only one time in our Lord's earthly life that this did not happen, and that was when he was on the cross. 
And yet, even when he was crucified that Friday morning, on that cross, he still claims his Father as my God. So in turn, what Jesus has done has chosen us, and he did it in love. Again, he's very clear in our gospel lesson that we did not choose him. As sinners, we do not have the will or the ability to choose Jesus. Our natural inclination is always to run away from him rather than to him. And yet Jesus loves us the same way his father loves him. He makes that love very visible when he lays down his life for his friends. He won our salvation on the cross, took our sin in himself, thereby restoring that father-child relationship that we have with our Heavenly Father through Jesus Christ our Lord. Again, Jesus' love led him to choose us to be his friends. That sound odd to you? It sounds very odd and strange and bizarre to me. I could understand being his child. I could understand him also being my Savior, my Lord. I even hesitate, but I also understand he's also my brother. But my friend? That doesn't sound quite right. And it doesn't sound quite right because of his divine nature. That's what makes him different than me. It makes him different than all of us in this room. And yet this is how close he is to you and to me. Watch very closely his three-year ministry of preaching, teaching, and healing. And you will begin to understand what kind of love Jesus is talking about in our gospel lesson already this morning. Again, captains on the school playground. They will pick their friends first, and they will pick them only if they can hit, throw, or catch. They do not pick their teammates who aren't already their friends unless they bring speed or skills to the game that they are playing. In the game of life, Jesus himself chose us who by nature are not his friends, but we are literally, as St. Paul reminds us in Romans 5, his enemies. And yet he turns around and he calls us friends at the cost of his very own life. That's choosing, and that's choosing in love, and that's what divine love always looks like. And note again what Jesus says. He's chosen us to abide in his love, to remain in it by loving other people around us just as he has loved us. This means keeping his commandments, his commandments that we love one another. He says that three times in our text, verse 10, 12, and 17. There's the Trinity for you again, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's his nature, which is the love. That's part of the major problem with the Muslim faith. They never ever see a loving God. They see a very long and legalistic God and a God that's very, very demanding according with his commandments. Jesus says it's the other way around. His nature is to love, otherwise he would never ever have created us, redeemed us, or even made us holy and given us his Holy Spirit. But that's part of the reality of the problem of our sinful natures here on earth. Because unlike the Father's love for Jesus and Jesus' love for us, our love for other people always falls short. The intentions are always good, but the follow-through doesn't always happen. The problem, again, with divine love versus human love is that we view love as lust or emotional sentimentality rather than as a relationship lived, lived out in action towards somebody else. The reality is you and I are more like that playground captain. We are looking at people for what they can do for us. And even though Jesus commands us to love one another, our strongest impulse is oftentimes to give in to hatred and anger instead. God's nature is always purely love. 
Think about it. When do you feel hurt emotionally? Oftentimes, when our egos are bruised, that's when we retaliate. God has no ego to, ego to bruise. He knows who he is. He knows exactly what he can do, what he has done, and what he will do. He knows there's nobody else above him. Therefore, he doesn't fall into the trap that we've got. Like I said, we end up living our lives more typically as a playground captain, looking for what other people can do for us. So in Jesus Christ, we receive the things our loving Father knows to be good for us. And by his death and resurrection, Jesus has made us disciples of his Father's household. Therefore, we will live in God's love forever. And as his love is constantly received by us through him, with the forgiveness of sins, freedom to live in God's grace as a child of God, and the power and strength to live on as a new creature each and every day of our lives, then love for our neighbor comes very naturally because our nature has been changed. That's the beauty about the gospel. It changes us from the inside out. The law can't do that. The law can change our actions from the outside, but it cannot change the heart. God is more interested in the heart than anything else. Because once he changes the human person's heart, he's got us for life. I've seen this played out in my own life several times over and over and over again. Including at the age of 17 when I went into the U.S. Army. For eight weeks during basic training, I was told what to do, when to do, and how to do it. And that included my favorite pastime right now that I'm older, that's sleeping. So if you see me falling asleep in this pulpit, please wake me up. But the point is, is that again, the drill sergeants were able to drill into me what I needed to do, including getting up. Once basic training was over and I got back home after AIT, my advanced training, I literally slept for about 24 hours in bed. Thankfully, my parents let me do that because they knew how wiped out and exhausted I was. After that was over, for the next three or four days, I kept waking up before the roosters would crow early in the morning. But that only lasted, like I said, three or four days. Before the week was out, no more getting up that early. I began to sleep in, and I began to stay up later as well. I went to bed still before midnight, but it was much later than 9 o'clock at night, because they could not change my heart. So the old patterns of behaviors came back. Again, only the gospel can change a person from the inside out. As both a pastor as well as a licensed professional counselor, I see people's lives changed constantly by the gospel of Jesus Christ. And again, people keep thanking me for that, and I say, stop thanking me. It's not me that's changing them. It's again our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. One person, one heart, and one spirit at a time. That's how God works. So because of God's love shown to us through Jesus Christ, we now in turn can love our husbands and love our wives, love our children, our friends, and believe it or not, yes, we can also now start loving our enemies and even people we've never ever met before in our lives. Now we do not love them, nor do we serve them as they want to be loved and as they want to be served. No, we love them as Jesus has shown and commanded us to do. It's like a set of dominoes. God's love in Jesus Christ catches on from one person to another to another and so on. Until the day that you and I finally come to our heavenly home. So God bless each and every one of you as you live in God's love now and always from here and throughout all eternity. 
and as he walks with you hand in hand through this earthly life all the way to our heavenly home, where we will be able to rejoice again as a family of faith forevermore. Amen. The peace of God that passes all understanding, keep and guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, the life everlasting. Amen. We now continue with our sermon hymn.
for those who labor, and for those whose work is difficult or dangerous, and for all who travel, let us pray to the Lord. Lord for all those in need, for the hungry and homeless, for the widowed and orphaned, and for all those in prison, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For the sick and dying, for all those who care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. O great physician of body and soul, we ask and pray that you look with kindness and compassion upon Chuck, Carl, Carolyn, June, tiny baby Osiris, Michael, Boris, Marsha, Eileen, Jeanette, Chris, Nancy, Sue, Don and Christy, Dawn, Ray, Cindy, Mike, Phyllis, Larry, Marilyn, Paul, and Rose. We ask and pray, dear Lord, that you be with them as they face their times of trial, pain, suffering, and healing. For you know each and every one of us in our weak and sinful conditions. You know the weakness of body and the faith that often strikes us in the midst of trials. Fill them with the hope that they will bear their sickness with joy and be strengthened in the faith in the midst of the cross in which they carry. Most of all, set their eyes on Jesus that he will be their strength and will bear them up until such time that they are relieved of their burdens. Bring eternal healing to them, all for the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Hear Eternal Father, you alone make the decisions concerning life and death. We ask you to show mercy to your servant Sandy, whose departure seems to be near. If it is your gracious will, restore her and lengthen her earthly life. If not, O Father, then keep her in her baptism grace, and prepare her to commit herself to your eternal care and keeping. Give her a repentant heart, a firm faith, and lively hope. Let not the pain or fear of death cause her to waver in confidence and trust. Grant her a peaceful departure and joyful entrance into eternal life with the glorious company of all your saints. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Gracious Heavenly Father, we ask and pray that you be with Janice and also Bruce. Continue to lead and guide them and give them the peace that only you can give to them. We ask and pray that you continue to be with them and remind them that no matter what decisions that they make in life, that it's always a true one and a good one when you are always the forefront within their minds. Continue to keep them grounded and the love for you continue to grow within the relationship of love each and every day of their lives. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Almighty God, you will Lord our strong defender and ever present help in time of trouble. We ask and pray that you will watch over the federal uh, military personnel. Be with Calvin, Andrew, Clark, John, Seth, Raymond, John, Michael, and Connor. We ask and pray, dear Lord, to be with them and all others who defend their life and liberty, that they will serve justly and honorably in the pursuit of peace. Grant them courage and strength in their time of service, and bring them safely home to their families and communities. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Heavenly Father, look with kindness upon our mothers today. Let them rejoice with the gift of parenthood that you have given to them. Enable them to be teachers and examples of righteousness to their own children. And let us honor and, and cherish our mothers and fathers, just as Jesus honors and cherishes, cherishes his. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. These and all of the petitions we have in our hearts and minds we bring before you silently. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord Jesus. Finally, for these and for all of our needs of body and soul, let us pray to the Lord. Lord O oh God, the giver of all that is good, by your holy inspiration grant that we will think these things that are right, and by your merciful guiding accomplish them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Blessed Lord, you have caused all the Holy Scriptures to be written for our learning. Grant that we will hear them, read, mark, learn, and take them to heart. That by patience and comfort of your holy word, we will embrace and always hold fast the blessed hope of eternal life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
I thank you, my Heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ as your Son, that you have done me this night for all congregation. And I pray that you will keep me this day also from sin and every evil, that all my dreams in life may be easy. For it's in your hands to protect myself, my body, and soul, and all things. Let your holy angel be with me, that the evil foe may have no power. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, preserve us now and all.